This is a video review of the Turbo Falcon Sword from Power Rangers Super Mega Force. And this thing is amazing! For a lot of the uh, Super Mega Force stuff, like the Legendary Megazord and the Curex Megazord, my opinion has been that if not slightly better than the Gokaiger stuff, it at least has matched the Gokaiger stuff in spite of being not the same thing, being Zord Builder compatible, and being s at least somewhat simpler. Uh, actually, in the case of uh, this guy, it's drastically simpler, and that's why this guy's better. But regardless, I have been of the opinion that they've at least been very close matches. This guy, however, beats the Japanese counterpart, which is called Mock Alkin. This guy beats Mock Alkin by a mile, and that's because this guy does something amazing that Mock Alkin doesn't. Now, for sure, Mock Alkin does its own stuff, like has engine souls that store in compartments on that would be right here if this were Mount Alkin. But this thing has its own Megazord form, and it's amazing. And it, it beats out the original, because the original was just a Formula One card that combined with a bunch of other stuff. This thing is its own toy. Now, to start off with, we're gonna look at the Ranger Key. It's a basic Ranger Key. It's a Red Ranger from RPM, or the Red Ranger from Go Onger. And what this guy can do is, he can ride it. Just put it in like this, put the feet down, and then close the cockpit, and here you have a ranger riding his sword. And I think that's great. This is the best integration of the ranger keys I've seen yet. Because usually the ranger keys are kind of abstract things that do gimmicks that would be much better if they weren't tied down to being ranger keys. Like for example, on uh, the Q-Rex Megazord, instead of just jamming a ranger into this slot here, there was just a button or even a rip cord. This right here would work a lot better. So, this is my favorite of the uh, ranger key integrations because it actually turns it from being just an abstract key thing to being an actual action figure. And uh, I like that. I think it's interesting. Um, moving on, the way this thing combines together into um, a Megazord, it is parts forming, um, but there's no way around that because this thing, this thing still has to split apart the same way the original Mock Alkin figure did. So, to start off with, we're going to split it in half like this. So we have this front section here, we're going to take off the front wheels, and we're going to fold these back and we're going to split it in half. So here we have these parts, we'll fold up the, spo the front spoiler here. We have these parts right here, we will set them off to the side. And we have this part here, which was the cockpit, and this will turn into the head. So we'll put those off to the side. We'll come back here, we'll pop off this pirate hat thing. We'll pop off the rear spoiler, and we'll pop off the exhaust, which is obviously a giant hand. So we'll pop that off, and then we have these two segments here. We'll pop them apart. Now we have a bunch of parts here. We gotta put them together. And the way they go together is kinda cool. First, you pop out the legs from here, and there are still Zord filler ports here, so these can just be normal lower legs too. Pop them out, plug them together. Then, we'll take the hand piece here, and we'll plug it in like this. Then we'll take the wheel assembly, and I know it's starting to get a little bit crowded. We'll take the wheel assembly, and there are some tabs right here that will clip into clips right here, and we'll pop it in like this. Then we'll take the hat, we'll take this thing here, and then we'll slide it in right here. I like to tilt it a little bit forwards because otherwise it kind of bumps into stuff sometimes. Then we'll take these parts right here and we'll clip them onto the side. And uh, then we'll take the spoilers and plug them into the front right here and right here. And then we'll take the head, we'll drop it in, and then we'll uh, slide it forward down in there. And it, it's a little bit hard to describe, but you just, you push it in and then push it forward at the bottom and it kind of clips in. And this is the Turbo Mega Falcon Zord all put together, and it looks really cool. The transformation, it, it's parts for me, and um, for Power Rangers I don't mind that so much. For Transformers it would be awful, but for Power Rangers it's not so bad. And so to get something that was that race car that had nothing to do with pirates, to get something that has a strong pirate aesthetic, uh, it's brilliant how it worked. And then some of the ways that combined together, like how you had the hand bit and then the wheels plugged into it, that was brilliant. I loved that. And so it's a great looking robot mode that looks like, if it's in with all the rest of them, uh, it'll be a bit of a tight figure, but they all look like they fit in together. Like, this looks like it actually would have been in the show, except for one thing, which I'll talk about now. The one problem with the Turbo Mega Falcon Zord is... This sucker ain't got no hands. 
It does have an elbow joint though, although it does free that up, but he doesn't have any hands, which considering this design was never meant to, the uh, car design was never meant to have any kind of robot mode, it's impressive how well this thing looks. So I'm willing to overlook the hand issue, but yeah, this is an instance of Bandai of America blowing Bandai of Japan out of the water because this, this is by far the best version of Mach Alkin. Now, we need to combine this guy with uh, some of the other guys. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to return back to the car mode because there's a tiny mode that I want to show you. It doesn't really matter and I don't really like it, but it would be remiss of me if I didn't show you. So, we're tearing it all down, putting it back together. I'm not going to put it completely back together, just enough to give you the gist. So, putting these in and then popping these out. Looking th these in, and this is one thing that kind of sucks. These things will prefer to go down rather than plug in, so need to do an angle. So okay, so here we have basically the car mode back together. As much as I want to put it together, to show you, he does have a mode where you do this, and it looks silly and kind of ugly, and I don't care about it. Let's move on to the stuff they actually care about. So. To do this, you're going to want to pop all the arms off of uh, Legendary Megazord. You're going to want to pop the hat off, and then this stuff will just kind of go off to the side. So, off to the side, off to the side, off to the side. Pop this open. Uh, try and keep this together, but um, it's not actually that big of a deal. And then we're going to start just putting stuff together. So, we're going to open this, and uh, Pull this off if you like. I, I usually just keep it attached. Then we're going to take this section here and we're going to plug it in. So bring this forward. Let's see, it goes in like this, yeah. It goes in like this and then you spread these out like this. And one thing that you'll notice is missing if you are familiar with the original toys, that this should have flame decals in here, but it doesn't. So here is the head and then we're going to take this hat piece and we're going to take a legendary Megazord's sword, so we're going to plug them in like this. Actually, this is backwards. We'll plug the swords into the hat. And then we're going to put the hat onto the top like this. And I apologize for how messy this video has kind of gotten. There are just a ton of parts. Um, then we're going to come down to these bits here. We're going to put the spoilers back on. like this, pop it apart, and then these will clip into the leg slots that we have left over. What's going on here is that the this section here is moving even while I'm holding it, so it's hard to get it in. So pop that in, pop this in. And then we're going to take parts from the uh, Key Rex Megazord, which are the arms here, pop those off, and then we're going to put them on here like this. And then we're going to take this arm here, we're going to open it up, and then we're going to take this hand, or the exhaust, and put it onto the hand there. Wait a minute. We're going to put it onto the hand here, and then we're going to fold the thumb out like this, and put it onto this hand right here. And then we're most of the way done, but not quite. The last thing we need to do is we need to take this piece right here, we'll bend it open like this, and that will reveal these tabs right here, which will tab into the back of the legs right here, which will give it a place to go and help keep it together. As far as I know, there is no place to put this. And then the other parts, you like you can put these on, so let's put these on real quick. And then what we have here is the, what's known as the Ultimate Legendary Megazord. And the Japanese version of this figure is called Kanzen Gokaio. And I'm sure the original Japanese version of Kanzen Gokaio works better than this, just because I can't imagine it not working better than this, because this is a huge clustered mess, and it's not helped by screw holes being visible here and no flame decals being visible here. So, 
In this mode, you do have uh, arm articulation, but it will bump into this. You do have, well, nothing else actually. Just arm articulation, that's a bit limited. Um, I'm not a super big fan of this mode, just because of how cluttered it is, and y you get a huge pile of stuff left over. You get two legs, you get this faceplate, and I'm just not a fan of it. I prefer a bit more part economy, which is actually why I like the Turbo Mega Falcon Sword a lot better, because you can have all three of them all together, whereas this one just kind of cannibalizes parts from all of them, so that the best you have is this thing, which is supposedly super powerful, and then this thing, which looks kind of crappy left over. So you've got these, and then stuff left over. I just don't believe that this thing is worth cannibalizing all three of them. So anyway... This has been a fair review of the uh, Turbo Mega Falcon Sword. I really recommend the Turbo Mega Falcon Sword for itself. The ultimate combination here is just not that great. So, uh, yeah, I review Power Rangers, Digimon, Transformers, um, Macross figures, lots of stuff like that. If any of that sounds interesting, please subscribe, and thank you for watching.